Hello and welcome to Halftime of the Football. Today, coaching in the AFL is big business. At the top end, a coach can earn almost as much as a player. But if you're just starting the caper and devoting most of your time, coaching can be a very lonely, cold, frustrating and sometimes gut-wrenching business. Today, at Halftime of the Footy, we speak to Greg Harding about becoming a coach. Because so many times we've come out of the middle on the weekend and there's just no one coming at our foot. Good, Foxy. If you're under pressure, look up, hit a Tony Knight, hit an Adam Hunter or an Ash Hansen or a Geepin. Good, Jim. Coaching has changed dramatically over the last 20 years. To start with, there are more coaches, but today they are a different breed. Coaching can also be lonely, cruel and damn unfair. So who would want to be a coach? Greg Harding is in his first year as league coach of Swan Districts. I think it was actually when I left West Coast and I went into the Wacker, uh, worked in cricket for a couple of years and I worked with Wayne Clark and I went across in player welfare and I had a bit of a background there because I'd had a few big injuries late in my career and it sort of snuck up on me a little bit, the fact that I was getting out of out of footy and I needed something else in life so I really enjoyed that time in player welfare and uh, I really enjoyed that interaction with the players in terms of helping them achieve more out of not only their sporting careers but their, their outside careers, you know, the financial aspect and setting them up financially and getting that, them that outside help and I think that's where uh, I think the first seeds were sown because I just really enjoyed that interaction of, of helping people and uh, uh, I saw uh, an opportunity after a couple of years at the Wacker to get back into footy and it's the, it has been my passion over the last sort of 15 years. Um, had an opportunity at Swan Districts Football to c come in and, and help the young boys of this area which is a real challenge. Against Claremont with their midfielders, if we turn it over across our half back line and through the middle we're going to get hurt. Because you were a good player, did you think automatically I'll be a good coach? Oh, it's hard to know what makes a good coach. Uh, I think it's intangible. Um, you know, James Hurd's just got this aura about him and um, I think that goes a long way to, to making him respected within the playing group. So I don't know exactly what makes a, a great coach, but um, I don't think you need to be a great player to be a great coach. I think communication's the, the key to it all. Um, and I'd like to think in, in the back end of my career, mate, um, where I was at Claremont uh, playing with Jackson Crabb, uh, Brad Weir, Anthony Jones, and they were genuinely quality leaders. That gave me a great grounding to go into coaching because they taught me about leadership. They taught me about how to communicate with my teammates and they taught me how to teach on field. And I've tried to keep that sort of rolling over into my coaching um, as it is today. So these are the ones we're talking about, boys. If we're going to turn them over, turn them over down the line. And if we just wait, wait for something to like, appear. Coaches have also had to change with the times. There are now video replays to watch, stats to consider. No longer does a coach stand at the front screaming instructions at his players, preferring now to clinically explain on what he did wrong and how next time he will do it better. Give, follow your ball, make sure you hit and then block. Absolutely. I mean, even, even this year we've um, had a wide range of issues that have popped up during the season and had to deal with um, that affected uh, the whole player group emotionally and affect coaches emotionally. and. Uh, and then you have to find ways to, to get player groups and individuals up and feeling like they want to play footy. And you just deal with those things on a day-to-day, on a -day, week to week, month to month basis. And it's about managing each and every situation and each and every individual to hopefully at the end of the day get a, a footy team to um, interact well together and play good footy. I reckon in that situation when we win clean from a stoppage, you've got to demand your structure to so get Sonny out of there. You know, because that's, that's just you leading up to 40, bang, go off but we don't have it and it costs us a goal. You do watch a lot of footy um, and you know at the start of the week uh, you watch your own game, your league game again uh, and all of that vision and individual cuts and certain aspects of your game you thought were good at or poor at and then we go back and watch our reserves team play and have a look at the individuals that are playing really good at that level and to see if they're capable and ready to come up. You get a feel for it on game day but pretty much after half time you know you have to go and prepare your own side so um, you get to you miss a lot of your reserves game so you watch that again on vision and then you know, I watch uh, two games of the opposition as well and get feedback from, from coaches that go and watch them play. Um, so you probably end up watching three or four games of footy on the opposition and of your own footy as well so the preparation for your game days is, is quite extensive from a, just a, a video perspective mate. Johnny, explode! Head, 
Do you feel uh, a lot of pressure from the supporters and players and that to, to win each week? Yeah, you do, especially when you take over a premiership side. Uh, the expectation is that you remain successful. Uh, we haven't been able to do that in the front half of the season. There's no doubt you feel the pressure. Um, when you've got guys like Adam Hunter in your system and Ash Hansen and Ryan Davis and Matt Riggio and they all come off AFL lists, there's an expectation that you do perform. So the pressure is there, um, but it's warranted. We've got good players and we're underperforming, so we need to start winning games of footy. How do you handle that sort of pressure? Win games of footy, <laughs> <laughs> which we haven't been able to do. But um, look, we still think we're in the in the mix. Three and six, we, we were really competitive on the weekend and just couldn't get across the line. But we just keep striving, as we said at the, at the start. You know, um, we just haven't been able to click. Um, we haven't been able to find the answer to what makes us a, this version of the Swan Districts Footy Club a successful team. And we'll keep striving to find that uh, in our training, in our video sessions, and just uh, try to keep getting better. Selection night adds a few more hours to the week, but there is still more research to be done on opposition players, structures, strengths and weaknesses, all in preparation for the weekend game. This is when the pressure for the coach starts to build. It's interesting because it controls your whole life. That's what football does. Um, it's probably not quite as bad as when I was a player, when um, I used to go home and kick the wall and not be able to sleep and all of those sorts of things. It's close, very close. Um, but yeah, it does control your week. Um, what it does do, and which is a good thing, um, by losing games of footy, you're always talking about what you need to do to improve. Sometimes you can win games of footy against opposition that you, you should beat and you walk in on a Monday and you're happy with the way things have gone, you've won games of footy and maybe you're not quite as analytical as what you were when you get beaten by a goal or beaten by four goals or whatever it is. So that's the positive out of losing is you go in and your preparation for the next week is always really strong because you're always looking for ways to improve. So that's the good thing. And we've had a bit of practice at that this year. Gives the hand pass to the speed to Roach. Roach now takes a bounce, loves to back himself in, across the ground with a foot pass. Could be a late goal coming up here for Swan Districts because Roberts is in a lot of space. Hand pass to Hinkley. There will be a score coming up. Hinkley from 35 metres has kicked straight. There's periods of games where you're overusing the footy or you're playing away from the way you'd like to play that are very frustrating, extremely frustrating. There's always instances and moments in games where you go, well, why did that happen? Or, you know, the umpire gives away a free kick and it's very hard to not to react in the moment. But at the end of the day, you need to put, put it into perspective and you're seeing, a lot of the time, as you're seeing 100 metres away from the action, you can't do a hell of a lot about it and you can't actually influence it until 20 metres, uh, minutes away when you get to a quarter time break or a half time break or and at the end of the day you probably can't really influence it until you get to you know your video footage during the week and you can talk to the player one on one and explain the situation and then rectify it so yeah it's very much about staying as calm as you possibly can. Every single mark, every single handball, hit the target, alright let's go. Let's get the pressure, oh, I think it's, it's completely different I, I believe because and, and quite rightly so because as a player I think in your head you can go in and you can, you can try really hard but there's always that safety net you know in terms of losing that you've got 21 other boys that are out there with you and you come off and you know you've played poorly and you haven't been at your best but you know there's, there may be eight or nine other players you know in that team that haven't performed well with you. So it's a different type of pressure because in coaching, uh, even though we've got four or five, like, um, four or five or six coaches around us that are all really highly respected, at the end of the day, it comes back on the individual coach. You know, at the end of the day, it's my fault that we're not winning games of footy. So there's a different type of pressure, um, but it's it's something that I, I do enjoy. Um, you know, a lot of people probably don't ever experience you know the levels of pressure that a you know an AFL footballer or a waffle footballer experiences and. Uh, it would be quite easy to sort of sit back and, and let someone else do it. But I really enjoy the, the pressure that comes with um, trying to make a, a group of boys win games of footy. It's good. Well, there you go. Coaching can be a pretty tough and lonely job, especially when your team's not doing very well. It's a lot easier when you're sitting at home at the comfort of your TV. Happy coaching.